Hello, everybody, and welcome to Kairos Has Friends, the show where I sit down with the people that matter to me the most, and those people are my friends. Before we get to our special guests today, I can't even, I can't even talk, I'm so excited. Before we get to our special guests today, if you are interested in seeing more Vibe with Kai, you can visit my uh, social media platforms. Visit me on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter at The Vibe with Kai. You can also follow me on Snapchat and on TikTok before it gets banned. Follow me on, the, on Snapchat and TikTok at Kairos Keenan. And if you want, you can always visit my website, thevibewithkai.com, where I'm always posting blogs and videos and things that'll, that'll help you uh, feel good, be good, do good, and live a good life full of good vibes. But enough about me and my good vibes. Enough about me and my, my positivity. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to be passing it over to a, another positivity spreader somebody uh that i i happen to, to meet on the tiktok and uh and now and now we i get to say that that she is my friend and i i'm, I'm super excited uh to sit here talking with my friend monica aka dat d t three girl what's Hi. up how are you i'm so excited you're here thank you for having me um it's really oh, awesome to be on here um i know it's a little different with the mask but we're gonna make it work <laughs> i know so for those of you that that don't that don't know her uh so she uh is is very known on on the social very well known on the social media platforms for for you usually are wearing a helmet like a yes. full-fledged helmet where we can't even see your eyes and on top of that she's she's wearing this helmet and she's dancing and and just grooving and just spreading good vibes and, and positivity and, and things like that and you know and, and i think you're about to you're closing in on a hundred thousand if i'm not mistaken uh, on yeah on tiktok I'm on getting tiktok yeah, yeah you're 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 getting super duper close and 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 that's that's exciting that that there are people that are just you know moving and grooving with you so i, I know you've i know you've answered this question this question 10 billion times so we don't have to spend <laughs> too much time on it but for those of you that are are um, that are like my followers and things like that that have no idea who you are and why your face is covered and why you're always wearing a helmet. Can you give like a, a, a quick background as to who you are and why you do what you do? For sure. Um, so I have three main passions in, in my life outside of my work. I love my job. But outside of work, my three passions are cars, dance, and motivation. Mm -hmm. And so when I decided to do some social media stuff, um, being a car enthusiast, sometimes women are treated very strange in that mm. area of the world. So what I did was I decided to stay kind of anonymous. So you can see that it's, it's me and I'm a real person, but you never really see my face. Right. Um, and the reason why I did that is I wanted people to focus on my cars and, and what I do with my cars. And, uh, and when I saw TikTok, I used to dance when I was a kid on a dance team competitively for like 12 years. Sure. So I've always loved dance. And I was like, hey, this is a great way for me to dance again. But I already had this anonymous thing started on Instagram. So I was mm -hmm. like, you know what? How can I incorporate this? So I decided to throw on my racing helmet, um, which is the same brand that a character, the Stig, from BBC show's Top Gear, mm -hmm. um, he wears that same brand of helmet. So then I just, I was like, I'm dancing and I'm wearing my helmet. So I guess I'm Stig does the jig. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> and that's why I kind of came up with that hashtag, Stig does the jig. But I'm still yeah. known that GT3 girl because we have a GT3. That's one of our cars. That's like our prize pony. Um, right. And so, yeah, it was just combining those two things together. And now I'm starting to throw up motivational quotes yes. on top of my dances. Um, I've also started monday through friday kind of saying something uh, motivational every morning right um it's gotten a little and you go live and you go live every thursday right right every thursday 8 p.m eastern standard time um i go live and during those lives mm -hmm. i talk about a beautiful moment from the week um i play some songs that have been stuck on repeat for me when i'm driving <laughs> to and from yes. work like what am i vibing to when i'm driving you know yeah um, so I'll play those three songs. Sometimes they sing along, not that I'm the best singer, but hey, karaoke, <laughs> hey, whatever. who cares? <laughs> listen, listen, we live our best lives. You know, we right? just live our best lives and whoever wants to listen, will listen. Whoever doesn't, I mean, moods are, moods are contagious. So it's like, <laughs> <For sure. laughs> and, um, and some other things that I like to do during my lives is I try to call, um, mm -hmm. my followers during my life and talk to them one-on-one. -on -one. Um, that's something that I learned from Joa Tang, who's mm -hmm. the person on TikTok that I met 
gang, 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 gang in the yeah, house. Yeah, the gang. <laughs> That's how I kind of met you and a bunch of other people on TikTok yes. was through Joe Tang. Um, so I've incorporated that into my lives. And then I like to end it with, you know, what was the motivational content that I posted this week that kind of stood out a little more than the others? Like, mm -hmm. what was the one that I really loved from the week? Mm -hmm. um, and that's just kind of something that I do during my lives. But you've inspired me a lot with your lives um, <laughs> to incorporate more things. I used to just kind of just chat and answer questions sure. and maybe try doing phone calls. But sharing that, like, the, the – beautiful moment of the week and mm -hmm. what's my favorite inspiration from this week and even the karaoke singing mm -hmm. that those ideas all came from you so <laughs> i love watching your lives i just like having fun like i i i because i i feel like and and you could probably attest to this like when you're when you're scrolling through tiktok and you're looking at you know because like people like you and i we we don't just follow other people other influencers you know because we want to like we also follow them because we we're looking for to see what they're doing and the types of uh, things that you know we can we can you know say like oh that's a good idea oh i could do something like that right. right i do the same thing all the time and i i noticed one thing when i would go into other people's lives um particularly the people that i don't know right right like i'm talking like some of these people uh that that i'm, I'm not privy to have any sort of connection with i just kind of sit in and, and listen and, and i don't really participate i just watch and i'm sitting there and i'm like there's no like content here. There's no like information being given across, you know, like most of the time they'll just like, like literally sit there and just read comments. Right. And like, but like that, that's, that's it. Right. And, and I, I knew, I remember watching a couple, couple big time influencers just like literally just sit there with their, with their phone in front of their face <laughs> and they're just like most of the time they're not even really even paying attention to the live they're just like they're, they, they just turn their live on because they can and then they right. go do all the other things and i remember sitting there being like i would never do that right i would never do that i just and, and you're the same way where i want to be able to sit and like at least try and like right. have a conversation or pass along some information because that's a good tool to get across right. your your message and to, or to get across a message in, in general yeah. And like, I'm like, I don't know if I'll, like, I feel like it's a waste of time if I just go on and just like, hey guys, what's up? Right. you know, like if that's just not, that's just not who I am. And I find sometimes it's awkward too, to just sit there. Cause you're just like waiting, like someone asked me a question to yes. fill this void. And I'm like, <laughs> why am I going to wait for something? Why don't I be proactive and yes. like, make it a show and try to make it as yes. interactive as I can, despite, you know, the limitations mm -hmm. of it going through technology and no one's right. in the room with me. <laughs> right. And, and, and the cool thing is this, like, uh, like what people tend to forget sometimes is how young TikTok is, right? So like some of the features that we see on like Instagram, even in regards to like split screens on, on live and stuff like that, you know, like TikTok has, only, has been around for what? A year and a half, two years. That's pretty young in the, in the social media world. So by people like us and others and, and Joe and Yvette, you know, doing things th with what we're given on, on TikTok Live, we're, I mean, I feel like we're preparing ourselves better than other people because what's going to end up happening is as more and more features get rolled out, I feel like we're going to be prepared for it already because we'll already have an established, uh, I guess, platform in a way and like to how we uh go about doing our lives every day and like with the features right. that come in things will just get easier as opposed to when you know us trying to figure things out and, and things like that so like I, I i applaud you i i remember i sat in i i've sat in on your on your lives and they're fun like once again people <laughs> you can go follow that gt3 girl um on tiktok she goes live every thursday at eight o'clock p.m eastern standard time mm -hmm. And, and I've, I've sat in on your lives and I remember there's been a couple of times that you and I like would talk like you, we, we, I remember you called me one time and we sat and we talked and I remember, <laughs> I remember I was making dinner that night and, um, I think you and I talked for like an hour on your live and it just flew by. Yeah. It just like flew by. And like, I, I remember sitting there, I was like, wow. And I, cause I, I made my dinner. Not only did I make my dinner, I ate my dinner <laughs> while talking to you and it flew by and I'm like that was really nice and I, I think you doing that and talking with people is a really cool idea so with that said when you're sitting and talking to people um mm -hmm. what is it what is it like to hear their stories and to 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 converse with them and 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 like what what do you get out of that 
what I get out of it is how how crazy and vast and expanding this world is like mm -hmm. just some of the stories I'm just like wow I can't believe somebody on the planet that I share air with has <laughs> done this and experienced yes. it or that's their life or, or is that even if it's some trauma that they went through and now they've overcome I'm like wow it's just amazing mm -hmm. what people are capable of and what they've done and where they're going and where they've been like to me that always blows my mind and also the craziest part the craziest part is like these people are from, I've never met them. I probably never will. They've mm -hmm. had a completely different life than me. But with every single person that I talk to, I find something that connects me to them in a way that I'm like, this is how we're the same. Yes. And to me, that's so humbling because I'm like, at the end of the day, we are all part of the human race. And this yes. is how I have connected to you, yes. a person that has been through what I can't even imagine sometimes, you know, mm -hmm. like, so that, mm -hmm. that's what I gain from it. Um, and I'm hoping what they gain from it is a little bit of company, a little bit of a distraction. Hopefully I've made their day brighter. Hopefully they feel noticed mm -hmm. and cared about, you know, someone took their time out to reach out to a stranger yeah. and have a conversation with me. And also, you know, whatever they're doing, if, you know, I've met them through social media. So I always give them that opportunity to, if you have any social media, talk about it now because yes. someone else who's watching might be interested in what you're doing. Like if you're jumping out of an airplane on parachutes, <laughs> I ain't going to do that. <laughs> God bless you for doing that. Right. But someone else might really love that. And then they might want to follow you and interact with you. Like I might be able yeah. to connect you to someone else. Right. So for me, it's just like taking this big web of human of humanity and bringing it together. Absolutely, so. and it's it's amazing how small the world seems when right. we're so connected. Because uh, I know for, for for me, like I've met people from all over the world that I don't know if I would have ever met them. You know, like like even you, like right? I don't know if or how our paths would have ever crossed. I'm not saying it couldn't have, but like the the chances were diminished. <laughs> <laughs> you know to, to say the least and 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 and, and tell tell people where, where, you're, where you're from like what state you live in so i live in michigan right in now michigan. Mm -hmm. um i wasn't born or raised here i'm not american um mm -hmm. but i'm living here uh mm -hmm. with my husband uh, i was born and raised in ontario canada nice so. nice yeah so like i don't know if like i've never been to michigan not on purpose at least i uh, right. <laughs> i say that whenever i fly when i have a, like a layover or something uh but uh, I, I've never been to Michigan. I've never been to Canada. Uh, I, I'm not like I. I like driving cars. I, I I couldn't tell you a thing, or I couldn't tell you anything about cars other than the car I'm driving. <laughs> you know. Um, so I don't. I don't even know. But like with that being said, though, that's what makes this so like fun is the fact that like the on paper, w like we probably would have never met. Like if right. if we had to take bets. Right? right but alas here we are sitting here having a chat on a uh, like this this is going up on a tuesday but you and i are sitting here on a sunday morning filming this right. having a chat right. you know like exploring a friendship right and like that's so exciting to me and like i feel like like that is what makes all of this worth it right you know because like i get to have moments like this um, one of the things that I wanted to touch upon, something that you said earlier, and I, I've heard you say this before, and, and, and I don't know if it was, a, it, was, it was a live or a conversation, I don't remember, but you were talking about women in, in the car industry and how they're kind of looked differently upon. Could you expand on that? Like, what, 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 is, what, do, what have you experienced in regards I, to being a woman in the car industry? Well, I guess it's just when it comes to, like, females being um, automotive enthusiasts, um, it's kind of like, it's hard to say, but it's very old school in the sense where it's like, you, there's only two types of girls. There's the girls that look pretty in a bikini and wash the car and have no clue how to drive it. it. Like yeah. they're just there to be the side piece. Props. The pretty thing. Yeah. yeah the mm -hmm. props just to be sexualized pretty yes. much. Enough. Um, and then there's the Tom girls who are never going to get a man because they intimidate mm. the man because they're better than the man mm -hmm. at what should be a man's sport. Right. Like no right. girls allowed. Right. So like, how dare a girl be faster than me and beat me in a race? Like how dare oh, a girl pass me? And then if a girl is very successful, 
um, they'll be like, oh, well, you only got there because you're a girl. Like right. people have been helping you. Like you've got more help than the other person. That's how you right. got to the point that you're at. So it's just strange um, yeah. how women are treated um, when it comes to just anything automotive enthusiast. Right. Um, Do you fight me, to break I, that I, mold? I Am I trying to? Yeah. I think every woman who is interested in like automotive stuff is trying to. <laughs> Do you know um, other women that, that are in your position that, that you speak with, you know, often and, and you like, do you, are you, are you, do you try to find ways to either help them or, or like spread, you know, like get rid of that, that awful stigma of like, of, of this, this, mis like, let's call it for what it is. I mean, this misogynistic, this, this uh, uh, male toxicity that, right. that is out there, you know, do you speak with other people, other women about this? Yeah, like there are a lot of, um, like because my husband, like he works in the automotive industry. Mm -hmm. um, so he has a lot of people that are friends that have worked pr pretty much at the three big companies here, like mm -hmm. Ford, Chrysler, and GM. Um, so, and they all have wives or girlfriends and some of them are interested and some of them are just, you know, this right. is their husband or their boyfriend. <laughs> They're not that right, interested right. as, as a hobby. Right. Um, so I know a like quite a few other females who are truly passionate about cars as well. Um, and they struggle with the same thing that I struggle with. We try to stick together and, and help each other out as best we can. We try to support each other. Um, you know, I have another really close friend of mine. Um, I think on Instagram, she goes by Darby MX five. Mm -hmm. Um, and she's a really good, driver um mm -hmm. she's only been doing it for five years she's really like she's winning competitions like she's yeah. at a skill level that i like i just started this year right. she's like you know she's my car goals <laughs> <laughs> uh, <laughs> like that's that's what i want to yeah eventually. like in five years i want to grow up to be just like you <laughs> <laughs> we're never um, too old to say that never too that. old like, like she she's gone through that too where you know yes. she has literally built and rebuilt her car on her own yeah she's had some help from like you know family and friends sure but as like anybody would yeah it was her car like mm -hmm. she's rebuilt it and everything um and she still gets you know treated weird you know she tries to yeah. not she tries to dress really casual yeah. and you know that's just her style and her vibe um and i think she's slowly earning respect right because um, she's been doing it for five years and i think people kind of no, not to disrespect her, but she's also right. kind of like a little bit of like a low key celebrity because right. everyone knows what her car looks like because she's right. Do you do you, do you find that the that there's any sort of like shift, you know, in in you know as we continue to navigate, you know, these these tough political waters and and racial waters and 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 uh, gender waters and and all of this, you know, over the last couple of years, especially in 2020. Do you find that there's been any sort of shift in a positive direction in, in, in that world? I think it's slowly getting better. Because mm -hmm. um, even like, you know, a decade ago, probably not would have been possible compared sure. to like this decade. Sure. Um, so I think it's, it's slowly getting better. I think it really comes down to how kids grow up these days. Sure. Because if you grow up with, you know, family members and friends that don't allow bullying, that don't allow sexism, there's no room for racism, mm -hmm. then you're building a brighter future. But if you're growing up in this little bubble where those things can still exist and it's okay for them to exist, or even if no one says it's bad, but no one says it's good, it's just right. like not talked about, right. then you're still complacent. Yes. It's just it's as bad, if not worse. It, yeah. Right? Mm -hmm. So... I feel like it just it just gets better. I think with time, and I think sure. that's why even for Dar my friend Darby, she's been at it for five years, and she's slowly gained her respect over the five years of doing it. Like right. maybe her first year, she was not very well received. Right. Nobody liked when you know she passed them. <laughs> right. Where now, right. I think people are starting to respect her because I guess she's kind of breaking that old sure. like the mold self and sure. So, <laughs> so that, that fast, that, that the whole, that whole thing fascinates me because like my ignorance, like I would have never known that was even an issue. Honestly, I got like, I, I would, it, like, it makes sense as you explain it. And as I hear about it 
and like just my my just ignorance to that industry and even just the male brain that I have sometimes mm-hmm. like admittedly like I like I can't sit here in front like like I just I would have never thought that but it makes perfect sense and I'm sitting here like yeah wait a second no they're just <laughs> like us like like it makes sense to me uh which is it's just it's just surprising um so so you one of the, one of the cool things is that you find a way to mix uh uh your your passion for cars uh, right. Your passion for motivation, which we'll talk about in a second, but but also mm-hmm. your mainly your your passion of of dance. You you love to dance, and I tell you all the time. I'm like, I can't dance like you. I want to dance like you. I want to make a duet and dance like you. I can't dance. Um, but with that said, so you've been dancing your whole life, right? Like you said, like you like like in in a in a way you you've been you've been you've been dancing your whole life, and you you are often dancing on on your TikToks, either making up your own dance or, or duetting with other people, you know, in their dances and, and, and just kind of grooving. Um, what has that been like? What has that journey been like for you on TikTok being known as, as the dancer, you know, with the helmet on? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And also, is it hard to dance with that helmet on? Like, because you're doing some full-fledged dances there. And I'm like, she has to be right. sweating under that thing. <laughs> um, yeah, I will say that wearing the helmet while I dance, um, it is a little bit of a challenge. It's, it's an actual functional helmet, so there's yeah. weight to it because there's tons of padding yeah. in there. <laughs> um, so there is some weight, so it makes my head heavier. Uh, yeah. There's certain dance moves that I literally can't do because of the helmet, which literally get in the way. <laughs> I just um, see you top over. You're just like, ah, no. <laughs> yeah. Um, and there's definitely been times where I've like hit you know, my arm to my helmet. I'm like, oh man, I got to redo that video because I banged into the helmet. Um, but, and, and, you know, it does get hot. So typically the way that it works for me is um, I'll either find a, a dance that exists that I really connect with in some way. I think it's fun. I like the music or, you know, I think that this dancer is really awesome and that they should, you know, get a duet, get some more recognition. More people need to see this person. Um, and I'll, I'll, you know, I'll come home after work and I'll take 30, 40 minutes um, mm-hmm. to just kind of learn the choreography. Yeah. Normally without the helmet, I'll put the helmet right. on right before I record. <laughs> That's <laughs> fair. <laughs> take my neck muscles and from like overheating. Yeah, um, yeah. And I'll take, you know, I'll, I'll film it. And then of course I'll nitpick because I'm a dancer and I'm like, ooh, my elbow looks oh, a little nitpick. I nitpick my TikTok videos all the time. There are some videos that I've, that like are like the most simple of videos and then right. I'm like, I'll look at it afterwards. I'm like, I don't like what my eyebrow did there. So I'm going to uh, start from scratch. Right. Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> For sure. So that definitely happens with me, too. Um, yeah. And I'll, you know, until I find the one that I'm happy with, although mm-hmm. I'm always never 100% happy with them. Yeah, um, same. But closest to, and then I'll be like, okay, this is good enough. Do you um, save your drafts? Like, do you, do you, like, film it, save your drafts, and then do it again, or do you just get rid of it? I just get rid of mine. Like, if I don't like the take, mm-hmm. I'm like, nope, delete. Get rid oh, of it. Oh, yeah, I'll instantly delete. I'm same. just like, that type, like, get it out. I yeah, oh, same. Like same. I'm like, I'm not, I'm like, I don't, like, like, it. Dep- like sometimes, like, uh, a, a, a take will be so awful or or like so awful in a funny way that i keep it just for amusement's oh. sake and I'll, I'll i'll send it to some of my friends i'm like this is so you saw the video that i posted today this is what actually happened when i tried this <laughs> have <laughs> you ever thought of posting some of the like i have i have the, i did post one i posted one this past week it was the first time i ever posted a, blo- a blooper mm-hmm. so like the ones that i film like the my work ones when, when i'm at work i try to make it seem as though like my coworkers. this is some behind the scenes footage stuff here i'm about to tell you all guys so um i may i do make it seem as though my coworkers have no idea what's going on right like 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 that's the whole thing behind my work my work videos they know what's going on i tell them before, i'm like listen <laughs> i'm like listen i'm gonna film this like i usually i sometimes don't tell them what's gonna happen but i'll, I'll be like listen okay. just react however you want to react just play it up whatever so like they they're used to it by now um it's very like very stage and so like um last last week i filmed a video with my with my friend austin and he was doing like this weird voice that he calls declan and so um we i i was like okay well i'm gonna pretend to have a coworker named declan that just won't shut up so i'm like okay I, and i put i held my camera my phone in front of me we didn't rehearse this at all and i was like okay i'm gonna pretend to be working and you off screen are just going to be talking at me and the whole concept is i'm gonna be like this is Declan, Declan just won't stop talking, blah, blah, blah. Like, this is every day and we're at the office, blah, blah, blah. So I'm like, okay, so that's the concept. Just talk and I'll react to it. 
And he's like, okay. So he's like talking and like, we, we should have rehearsed this, but like, he's like talking and he's just saying these things that I'm just like, I lost it. Cause he was just really funny. And so I like, there was this one thing he said and I just thought it was hilarious and I just burst out laughing. So I had to save it. And so I actually posted that blooper. Um, but anybody that didn't see that blooper would probably think that it was like 100% like there's a real guy named Declan that <laughs> that just won't shut up because that's the way that I stage it. But yeah, I, 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 I think I might start posting more bloopers. I think I might. I feel like sometimes that's well received. Um, yeah, I've yeah. seen some other dancers uh, when they're first trying to learn like a dance, they'll yeah. show like, this is my first attempt. Yes. Um, this is like the finished product. And it's interesting yeah. to see the progression. Um, I'm yeah. always like, no, I'd be too nitpicky about it. <laughs> <laughs> I, I totally like, get that. Super. Yeah, yeah. Do you have a favorite dance that, that like, that, like, I, I, I guess, let me clarify. Do you have a favorite popular TikTok dance that you like to do? Um, not really. Mm -hmm. Like, I, there's been a couple, like, I guess I really enjoyed Savage while yeah. it was around. Um, mm -hmm. and I haven't really found one that I like as much as Savage since yeah. then. Um, but I don't know my my style or what I was at least trying to do. Um, even though I do the trendy dances to the trendy songs, um, I try not to do them over and over again. I try to do yeah. one, and then I'm done. Right, um, right. And that's more so for myself. Yeah, um, yeah. I know that repetition on TikTok is very successful and well received. Um, but me personally. I get very bored of that. Yeah. Um, there's only so many times I can see the same choreography to the same music without being like, I'm going to stab my eyes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> one more time. <laughs> you, like, can try, you, you could try to stab your eyes, but I think your helmet's going to block you. Ayo. <laughs> Ayo. <laughs> For sure. I win. I win the day. <laughs> so I've, I've always tried to not be repetitive, to just yes. go against that grain of, even though I'm, you know, playing along with doing the trendy dances, because, hey, man, they're infectious. I yes. got it. Okay. Yes, they are. <laughs> like, yes, they are. <laughs> and I just sometimes I'm like, I can't believe I'm doing this dance. It's so yeah. silly. <laughs> like, but it's just so infectious. I right. Oh, um, my gosh. Yeah, I just try to do things that are different. Um, I don't want to be too repetitive. Right, and I right. feel like, you know, I feel like my followers appreciate that because yeah. at least they know that every time that they're coming, every time that I post something, it's going to be something new that yeah. they haven't really seen before. Um, or even if it is a trending dance, at least this is my version of it. And I'm only going to torture you with it once. And then right, <laughs> right, right. Move on with your day. You're right. Do um, you, has, has TikTok, has TikTok changed your life? Uh, definitely. Mm -hmm. Definitely. This is, out of all of the social media that I have, especially with this whole anonymous theme, mm -hmm. um, TikTok is the platform that I grew the, in the shortest amount of time to the, mm -hmm. I've never hit this number before anywhere ever, sure. like almost having a hundred thousand people watching yeah. me. Yeah. That's insane. I know. <laughs> like, it's crazy. It's like a hundred thousand people that are like, I like this. I like you. And I'm like, yeah. I don't even, I can't even find five people in real life that are like, I like you, kind of just like. <laughs> yeah, so it, it's crazy. Um, I never in a million years thought that, like, even when I first started TikTok, you know, I was doing it just for myself. It was yeah. a reason to dance. Um, yeah, I had the helmet on, but I didn't think that, I thought people were going to be like, this is weird. And right, like, right. ignore it. Like, right. you know, I thought maybe like, maybe the people who've already followed me on Instagram were going right. to follow me. Mm -hmm. and, and that was it. Like, that's all I thought. Right. And I think on Instagram, I have two Instagrams. So one is for my cars and then one right. is for TikTok dances. Um, so the one for my cars, I'm almost at 5,000, but I've been on there for like, you know, a long time. Sure. sure. <laughs> um, mm -hmm. But I, so I only thought that I was going to get like 5,000 followers on TikTok. And that's only the people who decide to download the app, which, right. so I was expecting like 4,000 followers. Sure. So sure. today to be here at almost 100,000 after a year and a half, yeah. I don't even know what to say. I, yeah, I, there's exciting. a big part of me that's like, I feel like there's this responsibility now to like yeah. take care of all these beautiful strangers. <laughs> yeah. No, I hear you. How so, do I do this? So, what do I do? So, <laughs> you are very much like we talked about this uh, like the third like we talked about the cars we talked about the dancing positivity good vibes right. you know like uh, that's one of the reasons why you and i connected you know because like mm -hmm. you like you know me like good vibes positivity moods are contagious you know all that stuff 
and, and you live and breathe that as well. Yeah. Um, there are people out there right now that are, 2020 obviously is not the best year in the world, right? Yeah. It's like, it's, it's, there's so much, <laughs> you know, but I do feel as though personally that while 2020 may not be our favorite year in the world, you could still, you could still be something great. You can still mm-hmm. do big things and you can still, you know, change your life. You can, like, things are not normal, obviously, but you are still capable of making the best out of this. Um, so, but there are a lot of people out there that are just sad and uh, understandably upset and scared and, and, you know, fearful, confused, you know. For any, if there's anybody watching right now, that are listening right now that may be like, I don't like this. I don't know what's going on. I'm scared. I'm confused. I, I'm angry. What would you say to them? What would you say to somebody that is just feeling so like down, understandably so right Right. now? What would you say? Um, My best advice for people that are hurting is um, you're not the only one hurting. You're not alone, despite how lonely it feels to be in your own type of pain because everyone has different pains um and literally if you talk to anybody they do have a story that will break your heart might not be the same thing that you went through but there's always people go through a lot life is not easy life is not kind it's not fair so everyone has a story that can break your heart um but that being said um you not being alone also means that there's hope Other people have survived sometimes things a thousand times worse than what you're going through. Um, Sometimes people have survived stuff that's not as bad as what you've gone through. Everyone's on their own journey, but I think if you try to find just a few good people who are going to support you and be in your corner, then then you can survive anything. Um, My biggest phrase is you can survive absolutely everything except death. Mm-hmm. So until you're dead, it's not over. There's still hope. There's still something that can happen. Could it get worse before it gets better? Of course, that's life. It ain't fair. But until you are dead, there's still that small little tunnel light at the end mm-hmm. of the tunnel. Like there's that hope you can reach some form of happiness, positivity, and health. Um, and I also think a lot of people, they seek um, healing from outside of themselves. Like they're hoping that other people are going to heal them. And yes, people can inspire you, um, and they can support you, but you have to keep in mind that you have to heal your own trauma. You're responsible for your own trauma and recovering from it. Bad things happen. That is not your fault. So the trauma that you've gone through, that is not your fault, but it is your responsibility to heal from that trauma. Because no one else can do that. They can, just like a horse, you can take it to water, but you can't make a drink. Mm -hmm. You know, they can give you the tools. They can give you the advice. But at the end of the day, you're the one that has to heal yourself and do whatever it takes to find how to get there, you know? Amen. Absolutely. How did you get yourself to that point that you're able to to confidently and genuinely say those things? Because I know, like 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 you said, everybody has a story. Right. right. And I'm not, I'm not saying that you have to, you know, say your story now, but w- what, how, how did you get to that point that you're able to, to say this and, and believe this in a genuine fashion? Um, to be honest, it wasn't always easy for me. Yeah. And I, I'm going to be totally frank. I probably mm-hmm. spent the first 22 years of my life, um, you know, having bad things happen to me, internalizing it and not healing from it and not, like knowing that I wanted to, but really not figuring out how to really just push through to the point where I was healing. Um, and I'm not going to lie and I'm not going to be ashamed. I went to therapy. Mm-hmm. I went to cognitive I behavior too. therapy. I don't think um, people should be uh, ashamed of therapy at all. I went, I went as well. And it was, it was, it was the best decision I ever made in my life. Yep. Same. So, you know, and I find, you know, not, um, not all therapies work for everybody. It's not mm-hmm. just this blanket thing of like, oh, if you do cognitive behavior therapy, you'll be fine. Because sometimes you need some other type of therapy. Yes. Um, but you also don't stop. Um, cognitive behavioral therapy wasn't enough for me. Um, it helped me a lot, but it wasn't enough. I still had to do some other therapies as well. 
Um, so <laughs> as crazy it was, and, and this is just me, other people go through different experiences, but I did cognitive behavioral therapy. And then after that, I did hypnotherapy. Some people don't believe in it. It doesn't matter if you believe mm -hmm. in it or not. If it works, it works. <laughs> like whether it's yeah. a placebo effect or not, doesn't matter. At the end of the day, it helped me get to where I'm at. So yeah, it wasn't an easy road. There was 22 years of my life where I didn't know why I was repeating this cycle of, you know, dating the wrong person mm -hmm. and, and internalizing pain and being like tons of social anxiety when I was younger, I had tons of social anxiety, but yet I was a dancer on this on stage. Like, yeah. what? That doesn't make sense. How can you dance on stage, mm -hmm. but then have crippling social anxiety? And I like, know that feeling all too well, 100%. Right? Yeah. So yeah. It, it was just, <laughs> yeah, no, I, I totally, I totally get that because, like, like I, I went to school for theater, uh, and and I minored in, in marketing communications, and um, people would always be surprised when I tell them how much of an introvert I am, you know, because they're like, but you spend so much time, you know, you're always like, wow, yeah, blah, blah. Um, but when the when the cameras are off, you know, when the microphone is turned off, when when I'm not on on stage where I'm able to in a way hide behind a mask of yeah. sorts um and it's just me you know i i like sometimes prefer to sit at home and and just be with me you know and 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 right. uh kind of look uh personally at my at myself you know and and just kind of have this introspective and and people were always surprised at that uh which i understand because like i am i do like I do have this outgoing personality, of course, but <laughs> at the end of the day, I, th I, I tell people all the time, I put up a TikTok about this as well, and I, I learned that the word for this is, am I think, ambivert or something like that, but I, I consider myself to be the most introverted extrovert of all time. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> yeah, you know, it, it t I feel like um, a lot of people are in like a they think that they're supposed to know themselves mm. at such a young age. And it's like, no, it took me a really long time. And we're still to learning. Know who I am, mm -hmm. what I stand for, what's important to me, what helps me stay happy and healthy. I feel like that's yes. a really hard thing for people to figure out, like what, what helps them stay happy and healthy. And, and I think a lot of people forget that you are worthy of your, of fighting for your happiness. Yes. You're worthy of asking people what you need from them. Mm -hmm. and you know if they can't provide someone else will like you yes, just yes yeah you know. absolutely 100 percent. i look, look i'm i'm so i'm so happy that that we're we're doing this because like i i always enjoy talking with you and 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 speak with you um to to kind of to kind of wrap things up i i love doing this thing called uh uh hot takes uh okay. where where i i uh, just say something uh, sometimes it's like a this or that. In this case, it's a this or that. Sometimes I'll just say a word, and then you have to finish the the, the word here. But in this case, it's, it's going to be a this. It's going to be a this or that. So I'm going to say two things, and okay. you have to, without thinking, just say what you prefer. Oh my gosh! I know. No <laughs> pressure. No pressure. Uh, but just know that right. the world is watching, and right. we're all judging you. And it's going to be on like multiple social media platforms okay. forever, forever, <laughs> for the rest of time. <laughs> so if you're running, if you ever plan on running for president of the United States, just know that these answers could come into play during the first debate. Yes. All right. Okay. Oh. All right. Cool. <laughs> <laughs> All right. You ready? You ready to do this? Ready. All right. Hot takes. Let's do this. Um, cats or dogs? Dogs. Dogs. Do you have a dog? Um, sort of. So I'm okay. a volunteer puppy raiser for a future service dog. That is amazing. Yeah. Oh my yeah. gosh. You're that's amazing. <laughs> All right. Pizza or pasta? pasta oh, good choice yes uh do you have like a favorite do you have like a favorite sauce do you like white sauce red sauce red sauce okay sure. i'm a white sauce guy i like give me give me alfredo sauce all day and i'm like set oh, yes, it's yes. good i like to mix it up but yeah yeah that's fair <laughs> gets me every time <laughs> um i already know the answer to this one so i don't know why i'm asking you but i'm gonna ask it, uh anyway singing or dancing dancing oh man oh dang it i was gonna say singing oh man <laughs> All right. <laughs> fruits or vegetables? Um, ooh, fruits. Fruits? Okay. Yeah. Well, what's your what, what's your favorite fruit? Um, oh, I don't really have one. That's fair. That's fair. <laughs> really I'll, I'll I'll mark that down on my list of judgments. I'm okay, down. yes. Yep. <laughs> Maybe you can suggest some that I should like try to stay. I don't know. <laughs> Apple. Do you like apples? 
Apples are good, yes. Okay, cool. We'll, we'll just say, I'm just, I'll make that decision for you. Apples are your favorite fruit. You're welcome. Okay, now I have that answer. So the yes. next time that someone asks when, me, I'll know. When you're apples. doing your presidential debate, <laughs> the moderator is going to be like, uh, what's your stance on this and this and this? By the way, what's your favorite fruit? And you're going to be like, ah, I know. Apples. <laughs> I have to figure it out. <laughs> um, I, had, I had this debate uh, this past week on, on my live, and we settled, we settled it, and the answer was quite clear to me, but I, I need to get mm -hmm. your, your insight here. Backstreet Boys or NSYNC? Um, I was always Backstreet Boys growing up. I know. The results said, and I was following you closely because mm -hmm. I wanted to see who would win, and I mm -hmm. saw that NSYNC was the unanimously the popular clear, The clear winner because the answer like, is wow, so clear. Apparently my childhood was wrong because I was totally team Backstreet Boys back like, then. I, like, Dang. here's the thing. I, I like the Backstreet Boys. I really do. I just <laughs> always thought that NSYNC was way better. It's not even close. Yeah. And we play, I played, I played their, I played the top 12 songs from each of them, right? There were, both sides had some really good ones, but I feel like once we got to like the top five, it wow. wasn't even close. Like the top five NSYNC songs uh, could take on the top five Backstreet Boys songs in a fight and win 100%. Because I feel like the like top five Backstreet Boys songs, like, like, I mean, you got, I want it that way, which is probably one of the biggest songs of all time, obviously. Right. But like outside of that, ah, okay. But anyway, it's all good. <laughs> and sing for life, JT for life. Um, do you prefer waking up early or staying up late? Staying up late. I am a night yeah. owl. Same. Oh, man. <laughs> Same. And like, I, I usually regret it in the morning, but I oh. do. I do most of my best work at night. All right. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. I like. I'm more artistic at night for sure. Um, do you prefer watching football or basketball? Um. I guess basketball. I'm mm -hmm. not big on sports, but if I had to pick between those two, probably basketball. It's a little bit more fast-paced. Okay. Good choice. <laughs> I'm down with that. Um, <laughs> do you prefer watching Netflix or Disney Plus? Ooh. I, Netflix <laughs> is the majority of the stuff that I watch. So I'd That's say fair. Netflix. Uh, have, you but, binged, have you binged anything on Netflix recently? Um, recently? No, right now I'm on a movie kick. Okay. Um, <laughs> what's, what's the last but, movie you watched? This is gonna sound super girly, so it's okay. You're allowed. You're allowed. <laughs> <laughs> um, like Kissing Booth Two, I saw. I, I've <laughs> heard of that, but I've never seen it. Is it good? Should I watch it? Um, I feel like the second one wasn't as good as the first. In most sequels, it's always like sure, that. So sure. Yeah, okay. All right. Fine. I'll watch. I'll watch it. Ooh, and if I, I am, yeah, I am also uh, binge watching The Umbrella Academy. It's as so well. good. I just yeah. finished it. I just finished season two like two days ago. Right. It's great. It's fantastic. Yeah. <laughs> oh, so good. I love it. Um, yeah. Wine or beer? Beer. Beer. Do you have a favorite type of beer? Um, I like ports and stouts. Okay. And, um, so pretty much, the, my husband likes to, likes to say that you like to drink like motor oil. Like, of course you're a car enthusiast. <laughs> my, my, yeah, my, pretty much for me, the closer that the beer tastes like smoked meat, <laughs> the more I'm into it. <laughs> That's fair. That's fair. Okay. Have you, this is going to sound so dumb, but I have to ask now, have you ever at any point in your life got motor oil and was like, eh. <laughs> Um, no. I wouldn't I judge, I wouldn't judge you if you did. I'm just right. saying you are a motorhead and you, you like, I, like sometimes people get curious if they're like, eh. Yeah, no, no. <laughs> I can safely say that I've avoided all of the things that go in the car. Okay, that's fair. That's fair. And also, that's a good thing because I don't want you to die. So that's, right. that's great. That's great. I, I would prefer uh, having a, a, a person that doesn't drink motor oil uh, on, yeah. on my show. So that'd be, that'd be, that, that makes me Although happy. That would make a crazy episode of My Strange Addictions. I'm not oh my gosh, have you, I have. Oh man, it makes me feel so much better about my... Right. Addictions that I thought was weird, but like I'm like right. I'm I'm normal. Right. And also <laughs> I'm just like, I can't believe that at what like at one point they had to start. Yeah. There was that exciting day to It was an exploratory moment when they're like right. Well, I mean mm -hmm. And to me I'm just like, how did you work yourself through that moment? Like mm -hmm. didn't everything in your head scream no? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Like, yeah, cause like, wow. like there's, there's, cause there's some things that I do like that are just weird, right? But then I watch right. that show and I'm like, I'm not so bad. Yeah, <laughs> I think I'm okay. Uh, okay, last, last one. Um, mm -hmm. Vanilla or chocolate? Vanilla. Vanilla. Do you do you eat vanilla ice cream? 
Yes, yes. I prefer. Well, because here's the reason why. So I like to consume chocolate bars. Like that's my that's favorite right. candy is yes. chocolate bars specifically milk chocolate okay. um but when it comes to like ice cream and cake i always want vanilla because i feel like chocolate cake and chocolate ice cream there's something about it where it like coats my throat yes. in a weird way I and it that. feels like and i don't like that feeling so i like chocolate i just don't like it in ice cream or cake that's um, fair okay that's fair <laughs> i i i I'm such a basic Betty when it comes to like <laughs> ice cream. Like if I go to the ice cream shop, I want vanilla ice cream with rainbow sprinkles every time, all the time. That's all I want. That's all I ever get. Nice. All I ever, I don't, I like, I don't eat cake a lot, but if I do, it's like, I like ice cream cake. I don't want like normal cake. Right. Oh, like I'm, cream. I'm really happy with my ice cream where, um, I pretty much just like take chocolate bars, crush them up and put them in. <laughs> in That's fair. Cream. Listen, <laughs> Hey, you do you. Bar. As long as you don't, as long as you don't drench it with motor oil, you can do whatever, right. whatever you want. <laughs> exactly. Oh my God. I'm so, I'm so happy we got to sit and talk. Listen, if people want more dat, D, uh, I can't, I can't, uh, I always say it wrong. Dat no. GT3 girl. Uh, if they want more of you, if they're, if they're like, Oh, I like her. I want to see more. I want to learn more. Where could they go and find you? Um, so I'm on TikTok under the name dat GT3 girl. Um, I also have an Instagram with the same name, dat gt 3 girl. Um, uh, on Instagram, I also have my dancing one, which is Stig does a jig. Mm -hmm. Um, and I'm going to put it down underneath as well. So like underneath <laughs> of this, like people are like, right, my, you're moving to us. Yeah. I'm going to put it down. And anybody that's listening on a podcast, I'm also going to put this in the description as well. Perfect. Um, mm -hmm. I'm trying to think of where else I have stuff that's, um, on Facebook. Um, I think it's anonymous car girl. Mm-hmm is the, the name that I have on there. And I Perfect. think that's it. Oh, wait, I got a Twitter recently, too. Nice. Um, again, I got to follow you on, on the Twitter. Yeah, I, it's, I don't post very often. It's just okay. when a random thought pops into my head, and then I True. remember that I have Twitter because I yes. forget about yes. it. <laughs> it's not, like, something I use daily yet. Yeah, um, yeah. I'll try to get better about it, but we'll see. Oh, that's fair. No, uh, that's awesome. Yeah, no, friends, listen, go follow her. You are not going to regret it, especially if you want, like, a, a quick little pick-me-up. Listen to her live on TikTok every Thursday at 8 o'clock p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Once again, you will not regret that at all. And if you want more of me... You see how I shifted there? You can uh, you can follow me on my platforms, and you can find uh, you can find Monica there. Uh, follow me on Facebook. Oh, we're dancing together. You can follow me on Facebook and Twitter and Instagram at the Vibe with Kai. You can also follow me on uh, Snapchat and on and on TikTok at Kyra's Keenan. And you can visit my website where I'm always posting uh, videos and blogs that'll help you do good, feel good, be good, and live a good life full of good vibes. You can visit that at thevibewithkai.com. I'm so happy we got to sit and chat, Monica. Thank you so much. This this was this was long overdue, and I'm I'm so happy yeah. that you were available today to to sit and chat. So so thank you so much for your time, everybody else. Thank you for listening. I love y'all and good vibes.